Good morning. My name is Edgar Fowl. Most people know me around the area. I was born here. I've lived here all my life except war service. And I've been asked to give a little talk on Sokum and more or less the old time stuff. And as the pictures come up on the screen, I shall be probably trying to tell you what they're all about. My wife and I kept the shipwright's arms for about 33 years. And uh, you might like to know that it was built by a shipbuilder, Mr. Evans, who had a, a boat yard down by what was now White Strand. And apparently part of his, um, part of the wages of the crew, or not the crew, the builders, shipbuilders, used to be paid in brass tickets, which had to be spent in the pub. I can't imagine people agreeing to that nowadays. And the little lounge bit on the left was always known as the House of Lords. Of course, it's not quite like it is now, but it was the House of Lords, and it was quite a small room. And anybody but a captain or a mate was told, get out of it. They, wouldn't, they weren't allowed in the House of Lords. On Sundays, we became pretty popular with people playing euchre. Euchre is a game that's played here, I believe. It's not played in very many places. And um, they used to be coming up outside the pub, waiting for the pub to be open. And then it was all sitting down and the winners on, you know, before we even opened the pub. They didn't have a drink, but at least they were there playing cards. And there is a great big crab there, eight and a half pound, which was caught by one of the card players, one of the inveterate card players, uh, George Clements, who is not with us anymore, I'm afraid. But I think the what fish was, the crab was eight and a half pounds. Sokum in old times was very famous for shipbuilding and mainly they used to build ships about 200 ton. They have built them up to about 500 and they were mostly, not all, but mostly topsail schooners. That is a schooner rig ship with square topsails on the foremast. And uh, I think Sokum was very famous for these sort of things. But that's sort of gone by the board now and it's only boat building, and now the boat building is not as it was at all. There was four boat builders here, but they, they, they've all gone, but they do build boats up around Island Street, but uh, not there anymore. Is this all that school? Yeah. Well, you. it was nearly 14. Mm -hmm. 30 years. Hey, 30 years? <laughs> no, <only> 20. <laughs> <laughs> a boat then, a rowing boat, used to cost a pound a foot to build. 
And um, Ken Richards, a fellow I know very well, very, very strong, very strong fellow, and him and, him and Jim Stone, they used to have their own boats, and he went to Edgar Cove on the Monday and said, can you build me a boat, these specifications, by Saturday? And Edgar Cove, being a big bluff bloke, said, I'll try. And he did. And the boat was called I'll Try. Just to tell you how keen they were on this rowing, I mean, they used to buy their own boats nowadays, anybody racing in the, in the regatta. They, 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 have the, they have to row, row the, the regatta boats, but then they used to have their own. And they used to practice by rowing against the paddle steamer from Kingfords to Solcum, and that one used to move around a bit. But they, they were very, very strong then, especially those two I can remember, Jim Stone and Ken Richards. Well, good morning to the Sorkham Maritime Museum here in South Devon. I'm Malcolm Darch, I'm the Vice Chairman of this museum, and it gives me great pleasure to take you round it as a part of your visit to Sorkham. Here we have a display of tools and artefacts used by the shipbuilders, the ship's riggers, and the sailmakers in the 19th century. These are serving mallets of various descriptions, uh, fids which were used in the rigging and a sailmaker's bag with various tools, beeswax which was used a lot. We have the tool which was used by the shipwrights in the 19th century to design a vessel with. This was a ship's half model. Uh, ships in Sorkham were built from timber from around the area, oak trees that were grown locally and timber was also imported from Canada. They believed that in days gone by we had, had as many as a thousand seamen supplied by the town here in Sorkham. And it's been said that Sorkham had more widows and orphans as a town than any other seaside community in the country. When the commercial side of um, income ended in Sorkham at the end of the 19th century with the coming of steamships, the local community had to find another way of earning a living and it had to be tourism. Uh, we used to supply men who would take the visitors out, commercial angling. We've had many famous people down here fishing on some of the finest sea bass, bass fishing grounds in the country. Uh, people like Paul Gallico, who of course wrote The Snow Goose, who had a house here. And the Cook brothers, who were very famous, and their father, Harry, uh, Harry Cook, who used to run one of the big angling companies that would hire boats and boatmen and take them to the finest places to catch their sea bass and pollock. Well, the ship that you see out there, the blue, the, the green ship with the tan sails, is Provident. They've just spent £300,000 on restoring her. I don't suppose she cost more than £3,000 to start with. But there she is, and she's the only Brixham sailing trawler left in the country. And there she is, a lovely picture of her. That is some sort of sight, isn't it?
Fort Charles here, or Sorkham Castle as it's known, um, was the last stronghold to hold out in the days of the Roundheads. They were quite well known for that. We used to get very high spring tides. It was almost like a, well, it was like a river. And I've actually seen a man rowing a boat up 4th Street. Well, this little snippet is Robinson's Row, known locally as Cat's Alley. I never did find out, but nobody ever referred to Robinson's Row. I think a lot of people didn't even know it was called Robinson's Row, but it was Cat's Alley. Now in the days of sailing ships and even in the days of steamships and even today, no matter how sophisticated ships are with all their navigational equipment, we still suffer from shipwreck. And this stretch of coastline near Sorkham is a particularly hazardous stretch of coastline. It's very rough, very wild, high cliffs and lots of shoal ground. The area around Sorkham is notoriously bad for shipwrecks, there's many amount of them. And our most famous one, if you can say it, is a famous shipwreck, was the Hertz against Sicily. Now, the day after she went aground, I went out to see her, and she, there she was on the rocks. Well, we thought, they thought at that time they were going to get her off, and they did get her off. But the, uh, the water was gaining on them, they had to be beach her somewhere pretty smartish. And they beached her just inside our western headland, a, a bay called Stairhole. And she was on sand. They thought it was okay, but any distance said it was, it was rocks underneath. And sure enough, it was. She'd worked her way down through it and broke up. But she was a beautiful ship. We had a terrible disaster on the lifeboat in 1916. Of course, in those days, they were rowing and sailing lifeboats. They, I don't know what ships like men or men like ships but that was really tough going and she went at this day i think it was october the 27th 1916 and it was very rough and all the people from Sokar, a lot of them used to run out to south sands to launch the boat and she got there all right because she was um running with the weather a bit but when she got there apparently there was a ship called the western lass and i've been up there fishing umpteen times up at start point and she hit the only bit of sand in the area. It's all rocky shore. But she hit this sand and the people could literally almost jump out of the boat, boat onto the sand. So that it was a wasted journey. Now on the way back, of course, she had to butt into the weather. And she tried several times to get over the bar and decided not to. And then they tried the last fateful time and 13 out of the 15 crew lost their life including three of my father's relations. My father lost his uncle and two cousins in that boat. And he went across to Sunny Cove 
and the first body he saw was one of his cousins floating about in the water there. So there was only two people saved from that boat. Subsequently, this is Eddie Disson, who, very famous local man, and he took over captaincy of the new lifeboat. Now, one of the occupants who was saved was Eddie Distin. And we have a few artifacts of his, um, which are also on display in the museum, which include his pocket watch, which he had with him at the time, which stopped at the time of the disaster. We also have lifeboat medals of his, which he was presented with, subsequent to the lifeboat disaster because he then formed a new lifeboat crew. He wasn't the coxswain at the time of the disaster, but he became the coxswain and was lifeboat coxswain here for many years afterwards into the days of the motor lifeboats and had a lot to do with modifications to the design of lifeboats to suit our local needs. We have other relics of that lifeboat including some of her oars up on the wall. So this is a picture of the, the little ferry that goes across to East Portsmouth. I believe the ferry now is 65 new pence, and it used to be one old pence. Well, Sorghum itself hasn't changed a great lot. Mr. Hitler did more to change 4th Street than anybody else, and we did have some bombs in Sorghum. And, of course, the main the bombing was because the place was full of American boats, and that's what they were after. I thought I might finish up telling you about our town crier who used to be very active when I was a youngster and the price for crying all over the town and going up to Batson which is about a mile away was one and sixpence and I don't think it was ever misused the town crier they used to say about waste drives and all this sort of thing but it was never misused except once I understand it was not quite in my uh, remembrance but there was, he went round crying that there was going to be out at North Sands, out in London, a troop, of, a troop from London with all these um, sea lions. 
and half a Sokum apparently went out there and to have a look at it, but not a flipper to be seen. Of course, it was a first of a first of April. It was the April Fool joke. Well, I don't know who did it. I, mean, I know people that do know who did it, but I think if the majority of people knew it, he'd finish up swimming off King's Arms Quay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video of Solcom. Uh, we've enjoyed making it. We hope that you love the town, same as we do, and we hope to see you get back again one day.